Hey folks, welcome, welcome, welcome. Boy, I get that word, I get excited when it's math line time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad to have you with us this afternoon. I am Ernie Roberts and I am your host for this afternoon's session of Math Line. We hope you got some math problems for today. It's Wednesday, it's the middle of the week. We're getting people who are getting assignments this way. Some of you are getting ready for tests in the blessed of the week. Oh my goodness, so give us a call. We want to work some math problems live together on the air. That number, 844-686-2378. We want to hear from you. You make the show rock when you call in. We have a lot of fun when that happens. We also try to give you some good help and good, some good advice. And we work the problems what? live together on the air so we don't leave you hanging, all right? So those of you who called this week, we appreciate you. We want to hear some more from people this week, all right? That number again, 844-686-2378. Get that in your speed dial so you can call us anytime you need to. And uh, while we're at it, waiting for you guys to call us, let's take a look at our problem of the day. Problem of the day says, a teacher spent, whew, a lot of money, $235.20 on supplies. This was 80% of his classroom budget. How much was his budget in the classroom? Wow. Okay, so we spent 80% of this nebulous amount, but it's not so nebulous. We're going to figure it out, all right? And we want to know what that budgeted amount is that he has to spend. So let's take a look and see how it's going to work, all right? Everybody with me on this? So as we look at this problem, we're talking about the teacher. We're talking about an amount of money that has been spent. So we kind of know where the end of the problem is. We spent. What we're trying to do is figure out where did it start from? All right, so we're, we're working a problem going backwards a little bit, all right? And that's what so much about math is. Sometimes you move forward, sometimes you have to take it back and go back, all right? So this game was going to help us a little bit to see that. Now, we know another percentage there, 80%. That means he's got, what, 20% left? But that's not really what the question's asking us, is it? This one is uh, basically all about how much was the total when we started out. It's a percent problem, friends. See the percent? Yeah, it is. So we're going to come back to that basic basic formula that I think is wonderful in proportion form. And we're going to call it the part over the base equaling that percent over 100. There you go. You've seen it so many times with this show. I hope you've got it down. It's a most practical way to solve and figure out a lot of day-to-day -day things. This is a day-to-day -day problem. This is a real-life, real-world type situation. So. What we got to do is figure out, do we have a part? Do we have a total? What, what do we got? We know we got a percent. So let's go ahead and put that where it belongs. Put 80 over 100. Nice, nice, nice. I think so. Because, hey, we could reduce that to four-fifths, but that's not the question, is it? What the question is, what's going to happen over here? What are we going to build our fraction? Where did we start from? We don't know. We've got to figure out what that budget amount was that led us to $235.20. So, you've got your base that's in missing. We'll call it in. Last anything. You can put a B down there if you want. It doesn't matter. Whatever variable, go ahead and put whatever. We're going to use N on the show today. And we do have two. Ooh, let's put that in there. Make sure that decimal point pops in. And now we are ready to do maybe some cross multiplying. That sounds looks like a lot to do, but it's really not that bad. Because notice what's going to happen. We are going to... We're going to take and multiply 80 times n, which is relatively easy. Now, on the other side of the coin, we are going to take these two guys, $235.20, or two-tenths, as I seem to put it up there. So we're going to take that 235 and two-tenths, and we're going to multiply it by 100. So in other words, to cross-multiply, we go on the diagonal. We don't go across. In this case, we go on the diagonal. And then we have a nice little equation here. We got 80n, which means 80 times something. I'll put an n there. It looks like an n. But what about over here? What happens when we multiply by 100? Do we need a calculator? Some of you may say, well, I do. But what it means by that it means we're going to move that decimal two places because that's what it is when we multiply by 100. It's like 10 to the second power, which means we move it to the right. So how about it? 235, 20. Oh, where's the decimal? So it's 23,520. Sometimes we fumble with those numbers till we figure out where's the zero going to land. But there you have it. Now, if you want to go through it on the calculator, you won't go right ahead, but you really don't need to. Let's Now, the part you probably do want to go through is let's do some division. Because what we got to do now, we have got to take our 80 and divide it through 
And let's see what happens when we do that. I'm going to type it in here because that's kind of a big number. 22,520. And we're going to divide by 80. And let's see where we go. 294. That seems to be what our Facebook folks seem to think today. So how about it? We've got that beginning budget was at 294. I know this should just gone ahead and give you $300 there, sir. But uh, anyway, we got 294 for our answer there. And the question is, what does that check? Well, very easily. If you were to take 294 and you multiply it times 80%, all right? Notice we divided to get there. So to get back to where we started, um, we want to, in other words, we want to multiply and check. All right, so let's do it real quick. Calculator, and then we will hopefully have some calls waiting for us here. 294 and multiply it times 8 tenths. And I'm seeing, yep, that's exactly what we started out with. $235.20. All right, so there you have it. Now, folks, we need you to give us some calls. Speaking of which, Let's go for that, all right? Let's get some phone calls going. That number, 844-686-2378. Life is good, and we want to hear from you, all right? So all you folks, and by the way, quick shout-out to our Facebook folks. Um, David, Margie, Mark, Denise, Connie, and James, all involved today on Facebook, engaged in some such shape or form with our problem of the day. So we appreciate that. Folks, we operate that pretty much. We throw that out to you the night. After the show, we do it right after the show is done for the next day, if it's a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. And tomorrow being Thursday, usually we will be, but I just go ahead and give you a little heads up. We are only going to be live today, this week. We're going to be off tomorrow. We have a little specialized segment for you as well as on Friday. So just keep that in mind. So no problem of the day to work with tomorrow on Facebook, but we do have two great shows coming your way. Speaking of which, that means... You need to get calling, right? Because we have only today to answer your questions live on the air. So give us that call, folks, 844-686-2378. We definitely want to hear from you, all right? And past week, we have already had some great calls. Last week, we had some great calls. So let's make some more great calls today, all right? Have a great show. Make this show a rock. And to get us rolling again, if we don't have any calls yet, I don't think we have. Right, do we, guys? We're pretty much clear. Let's do another little view of money, all right? And we talked about budget here. Let's look at another problem here with money involved. While we're doing that, you give us a call, all right? 844-686-2378. Give our operator some work today, all right? We want to hear from you. All right, next problem right here in front of us says, suppose you earned $120 from your job last week. Good for you, good deal. Even better, you want to save $40 of that. I like that. And then you want to buy some books. Even better, all right? So you're going to buy books, you're going to save $40, and you're going to basically spend $120, or you're going to work with $120. Saving is not spending, right? Everybody says that, nod, Ernie, be careful, right? Don't walk on that thin ice, right? So here's what's going on. We want to find out how many books. So I'm going to let X equal the number of books. Now, those books have a cost. $16 each. I don't know if you're buying a book club, you go on a bookstore, you find something you like, da, 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 all those good things. But you're looking at a $16 each. That's not 16 books, all right? That's $16 times how many books. Aha! Everybody got that? So when we want to figure out the cost of the books, that's going to be 16 times that number of books. So for example, if I had two books, $16, that would be 16 times 2, 32. You get the idea. Now, you're also going to save $40. In other words, both of these are, com are going to be added together. You say, well, Ernie, why'd you add those? Seems like you want to subtract. No, we don't want to subtract because in the end, we're taking all of this stuff, what we spend, plus what we save, and we come up with $120. Now, that's what we're looking at, all right? So let's see where this is going to go. Now, we may have exactly enough to get. If not, hey, you, you know they don't. They don't sell you or they don't loan you money, right? So you've got to keep going with this. So let's see, minus 40, we're going to solve it just like we do some algebra, okay? And what do we got here? I got 16x, because remember those 40s, they're by. And we've got 80 over there, because that's what happens when you take 120 minus 40. Now, just a second here, let's see where we're going to go. Calculator sounds like a good idea on this. Oh, it's not a, a most difficult dif division, but let's see what happens. 
80 and we will divide by 16. And that should give us, ooh, that did come out nice. Thank you. It gives us five books. And again, context problem. Don't necessarily, some of you don't necessarily buy books, but sometimes you want to know, well, how many, um, how many CDs can I make? Or how many um, tunes can I download for a certain amount of money? It may not be $16 each, but you got the idea. So you take that times X and whatever you got left, whatever you got to spend, you go for it. Now, can we check it? I hope we can. By the way, while we're checking, give us a call, all right? 844-686-2378. I think someone tried to get in and get online with us here, and we somehow disconnect you. So please give us a call back, all right? We will be glad to pull you in here in just a quick second. Let's check this thing out, and hopefully you will give us a call back, our caller who we just lost. Uh, 16 times 5. You got it. Well, we already know what it, oh, do we know? Yeah, we should know. 16 times 5 is supposed to give us 80, isn't it? Came out nice and even a minute ago, so that's an easy way to check back. I get 80, and if I add 40, the question is, do I have 120? And the answer is, yes, I have 120. So it checks. Five books is a good answer. Always, you can do that mentally. I, I wrote it down here for you to see. In other words, we took our equation right back here and just plugged in a nice little 5 for x. And then we add our 40, and life is good. So again, that's the storyline here. Now, what's your storyline for today? Let's get some calls going, all right? 844-686-2378. We need to hear from you this afternoon, my friends, all out there. I know, next week, some of you may be starting a few spring breaks. No, we aren't spring break yet. Fall break, how about that? Whew, can you believe fall break already coming up? Definitely summer taking the first of October, and many, many systems, at least in Tennessee, I know we're taking it the 7th through the 11th because that's when Knox County is going to take a big, nice, long break and hiatus. But, hey, we aren't. We're going to be here, all right, throughout this fall break, whenever yours is. Tomorrow is the day we're going to take away, but we'll be back next week live four days of the week, all right? So that means, yes, you need to give us calls today because this is your last chance for help live on the air. This week is today. So make that call. Let's go. Go, go, go. Pick those numbers. Again, 844 Six eight six two three seven eight. And in the meantime, understand. I think we have a hey math line waiting in the wings. Can we go for that guy? Hey math line. I'm Elizabeth from Carter High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. Will you please solve the equation five minus three x equals thirty five for me? All right, Elizabeth from Carter High School here in Knox County in the Knoxville area. Let's see, and that's at the Ripley Aquarium. Thank you again, Ripley, for allowing us to come up and do some math line filming and such. We had a good time there. And I think the students who and folks who were coming through and did some of our questions for us had a good time also working with us. So again, simple equation. Sounds kind of like almost what we did just a minute ago, except this one is set up for us. We don't have to worry about that part. So the equation 5 minus 3x equals 35. Thank you, Elizabeth. Let's see how we're going to work through this one. And like I said, while we are working through this, give us a call, all right? Now, tricky moment here. This is a good old 7th and 8th grade pre-algebra or 8th grade, 7th and 8th grade math type problem. You basically, it's a two-step two step deal, but the thing that is waiting to trip up so many of us, so many of us, is what do we do with this minus 3x and what do we do with the 5? Because that's the whole gist of the problem, the whole gist of the problem. We'll let things happen over here. But the first thing I want to caution you on, everybody listen to me on this. Do not, repeat, do not take 5 minus 3 to start off with. If there was an x, if it were 5x minus 3x, but Elizabeth didn't say that, did she? Mm -mm. She was very explicit on it. 5 minus the 3x, all right? So we don't say 5 minus 3 first. What we do, though, is realize this is saying, Five times, five, no, five minus three times the number equals 35. So we've got to figure out how we get rid of that five. The five is hooked in basically as a positive five. The minus is behind it, but it does not go all of a sudden in front of it. No, no. What we're going to do is we're going to subtract five off so we can get rid of it. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's sometimes a mistake that a lot of students make. A lot of times they just put a plus five and they say, oh, they cancel. No, they didn't because the minus is going with the three X, not with the five. Now, we do have this minus 5, which is going to take care of that problem, all right? So we're going to be away from that in just a second. 
minus the five on both sides. Now, I've called it that. Remember, I've talked about it being the addition property of equality or the subtraction property of equality. Here, my friends, we're subtracting five from both sides, and that looks good for us. So say goodbye to the fives, but don't, 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 don't. Take away the minus three. It's there. You've got to keep that minus in front of there, all right? Over here, let's go for it. 35 minus 5, we can do that one in our head. Don't need the calculator. Got a 30 rocking for us, okay? Now, divide by negative 3. Now you get to work with that negative 3. Why did I divide? Everybody, why did I divide? Well, because it's multiplication. How do we undo multiplication? How do we unhook it, as I like to say? We divide by that number, and we got to do it to both sides. Another division property of equality moment. There you go. And, oh, anyone can divide that one in their head. I hope so. And know your rules for positives and negatives. How about a negative 10? Oh, we're done. We got the answer. Question is, does it work? All right, so let's check it out. 5 minus 3 times, put that negative 10 in there. Do we get 35? Now, here we go again. We're back to those good old order of operations when we check. We do multiplication first, multiplication, division, get equal treatment. Blah, 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 my hands are all excited there. And then we'll add or subtract. All right, so basically what it's saying is let's multiply, and then we're going to make that go, it's going to become a plus. And so we're going to have 5 plus the 35. Does it equal 35? How about putting a 30 in there, Ernie? You're jumping the gun. You're getting excited there, all right? So 5 plus 30, that will equal 35, which equals 35. So it checks out. Elizabeth, there's your answer. There's your problem. And I heard a ring, but I hope we're getting there with a phone call here sometime soon, all right? So, folks, again, once again, give us a call. We are loving to hear from you today. We want to hear from you today. And how you do it, you get the call, get that number, 844-686-2378. Got a few more minutes here on the show. And as we said a little bit earlier, as I said a little bit earlier, this is going to be your last chance for this week. So don't miss out on it, all right? Let's take a, let's take a look at another problem here. This is one of these fraction moments. I say fractions are our friends because, again, they're very important. And this one is a common type situation where basically I'm going to write over here to the right a little bit about right here. What we're trying to do is say 8 minus 2 and 5 eighths. A lot of times we like to see these things stacked up vertically, okay? And it makes a little more sense because if you'll notice, I have so many times students want to say, that's 6 and 5 eighths. Well, no, it isn't, okay? It can't be, can't be, because you're subtracting two and a little bit more. So guess what? If you subtract two, you're at six, subtract a little bit more, it's got to be five and something. Does that make sense, all right? Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do, I've got, so what is this crazy rectangle for? We're going to divide this thing up into whew, eight strips, eight equal strips here. And we're going to show you, I may have gotten a little carried away, we'll see. I believe we got it there. Curious George helping me out a little bit today. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and connect them off, make little rectangles, and they're all the same, pretty much about the same value here. Uh, some of you are going like, Ernie, can you draw a straight line even with a ruler? Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. All right, let's see how this one works. I'm going to go close. Take the rest of the show just trying to draw this. But in the meantime, y'all give us a call. Save me from having to draw too many more things. Let's see. There we go, and another straight line down here. These are looking funny, aren't they? Uh, or whatever. Just go one more and two more here. And once we do that, we've got everything finished. Last split, there we go. Eh, could be better, could be worse, not too bad, all right? So here's what we're gonna do. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice eight blocks there, okay? We wanna subtract off two. So like I said, there we go. Get rid of those two right there. But also, I want to take a little bit of one more. I don't want to take a full one, okay? I'm already good with the two. What I want to do here is take care of the five eighths if I lose it also. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to try to make this work. You know that. I'm going to try to make this work. We're going to try to divide this little guy into whew, eight sections. All right, so here we go. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, and there's eight. So we'll just cut right across. I'm going to use, I don't think I need to bring George back in. There we go. You get the idea. So what did I just do, folks? I just divide that into eighths, didn't I? 
because I want to figure out how to get rid of five of those little eighth pieces, all right? Now, and for those of you who don't believe me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, pretend they're all the same size. They're supposed to be, all right? So we're not trying to make, we're not trying to make a statement there. So we're going to lose five of those. So we get one, two, three, four. Oh, we got four and five, right? That's our fifth one, right? So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So I count three that I didn't shade out, plus one, two, three, four, five big guys. So we're looking for over here five and three eighths. That's what my picture says. Now, sometimes people don't like to go to all the trouble of drawing a picture, although I think drawing a picture is a great way to go, all right, because it helps you see what's happening. But let's see what we just did. We took one piece out of the eighth, and that left us with seven. But what happened with that one piece we took out of there? In other words, they're still, these were all full pieces. I have seven full pieces, but what did we do here? We broke it up into eight parts. So where I had zero eighths to begin with, now I'm going to add eight to that zero because that's what I just did. I shredded nothing. Well, I did shred nothing. I shredded one thing and brought it over and said, well, we're going to have eight over eight. So what does that do for me? That gives me seven and eight eighths minus two and five eighths. And you know what happens there? You get three eighths, which is nice. And we get five here which is the same thing my picture got me, all right? So that's a way to look at it. Some people may like to make circles. That's a lot of circles to make, eight of them. And then you broke one of those circles into eight pieces, like a pinwheel kind of thing, like pizza cutting, all right? You cut them up into eighths, and then you can take five of those away, and guess what? You'll still have three. So visual aids, whatever they do to help you see it, my friends. Young, you folks who are adults, students, young children, it's an easy way to deal with your fractions if you can think about that. And the eighths, the fourths, and the halves are all nice little benchmark fractions. We usually like to be able to think and we can figure them out pretty well. As well as tenths, because that's the decimal base. So those are easy to figure out too. So hey, draw it out when you need to and let Curious George take care of you, all right? So that's our fraction moment for the day. A little fraction action. Still give us a couple if you um, are so inclined. Heard the phone ring a few times, but evidently maybe some people got a little shy. Nobody's brought me in a picture yet of anything to do or anything like that. So let's talk about Facebook since I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Let's go there. And um, with Facebook, we like it when you love us. We like it when you share us. And we just want you to go there, www.facebook.com forward slash mathline online. Like I said, we have so many good things that happen there. That's where we'll post the problems of the day. We'll also post in advance what the title of the show is going to be. So you're ahead of it, even if it's a specialized segment, okay? You know what's going to happen a day in advance. So check us out after the show tonight around 7.30 or 8. We've got that thing going for us here, all right? Now, also, YouTube, you can see some of our past episodes. We're hoping to get those things updated here in the next uh, month or so with what we've done in the new season. And subscribe there to www.youtube.com with a forward slash math line. But there's certainly plenty of our shows from the past, a lot of problems of the day from the past that you can go back and review and help you out, okay? Now, let's do one quick pickup before we leave here on the show today, since I, I think we're getting close to the end here. Let's take two fractions. I'm gonna use 3 eighths, and I'm gonna divide it by one fourth. And then I want to go do the same thing, but I'm going to put a multiplication sign between those. Now, what's going to happen first? When we have division of fractions, this is just going back to some quick, quick little review moment here. Got a teaching moment here at the end of the show, I like to say. What's the game plan? We cannot divide by one fourth. What it means is we're going to have to multiply by the reciprocal, which basically means we're going to come back and, whew, we're going to divide this thing into fourths, and we're going to be doing all sorts of things. So we're going to be multiplying by four over one. You got it? So here we go, three-eighths and times, let's use reciprocal, four over one. And many times you folks have seen me do this. You've seen me say, you know, uh, we can do a little cancellation. We can multiply across if you want. Yesterday, Alyssa was working with us. We told we could multiply those numerators together. So we'll go with that. And we give us 12. And that would give us 8. Now, I also told her sometimes you have to come back and reduce things. If we had gone with cancellation earlier, we would have been in good shape. 
But let's see what happens here. We're going to divide both of these numbers by 4. Divide 4 into 12, I get a 3. Divide 4 into 8, I get a 2. And many teachers and many of us just like to see 3 over 2 is nice. It's a good answer. We like to make that into a mixed, mixed fraction, mixed number. And so we come up with, how many times does it go? 2 divides into 3 goes 1 time, 1 left over, we get 1 and a half. Now if we start with 3 eighths times 1 fourth and didn't do any reciprocal business and just had multiplication there, be a different story. We'd have 3 over 32. But that's not what we had. We did use a reciprocal. So there you go. Final answer if you're playing along at home. Hey, thanks again for tuning in. Specialized segments tomorrow and Friday. We will see you again next time.